Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Nona from TheAlliancelover.com. I have another style video for you today on one of my favorite style inspirations, Winona Ryder. I was named after her, so I find her endlessly fascinating. This is going to be a long video. So if you have this sort of dark ethereal essence like she does, if you're also a soft gamine, or if you're just into Winona Ryder, this video will be all about her, her best looks, and how to support the different aspects of her image. So I consider Winona to have a very strong, dark, ethereal essence. So her ethereal essence is this kind of otherworldly beauty. She looks like she could be a fairy or an elf. She also has that very mischievous quality to her. And the element that I like to relate this ethereal beauty to is air. Air is more light, it's more playful, it moves around all of the time, it's not very heavy. So if it helps clarify, a very different kind of beauty it would be a very earthy beauty with a lot of robustness, the very voluptuous and conventionally, conventionally sensual beauty like... Sophia Loren or Monica Bellucci. She also is a little bit darker in her beauty thanks to her high contrast and this kind of dark, mysterious, intriguing, and magnetic quality to her. That's why she thrives in these more mysterious roles like her Edward Scissorhands roles or in Beetlejuice, or now in Stranger Things. She has Venus in Scorpio, which is very resonant with this darkness. If you're interested, I have a whole playlist of Venus placements and aesthetics. Her look is also very face and hair centered, as opposed to like full body personas like Marilyn Monroe, Sophia Loren, Sophia Vergara. When you think of these body-centric celebrities, you think of their whole body. You know, they really show off and emphasize and exaggerate their body, whereas Winona tends to center her looks around her hair and her face. That's what most people notice much more, even though she does have a very interesting body, which we'll get into her hair and face tend to dominate in terms of what we pay attention to. All right, one more thing to note is that she is a soft skin so she will get overwhelmed with too much yang elements, too much sharpness, too much matte, too much head-to-toe darkness, too much angularity, and I have these photos set side by side because they show kind of two versions of very similar looks. One being very yang dominant on the left side and the other softened. There's more yin to it and she looks more of herself and more integrated with these softer looks. And by integrated, I mean she presents her entire image and persona with the outfit instead of having the outfit kind of dominate. In these left photos, we see the outfit on her, but on the right, we see her in these outfits. So soft yin kinds of details like lighter fabrics, drapier fabrics, lighter colors, and a bit more contrast are really great, as well as like shimmery, lighter makeup, some gloss that really helps soften up a look so it doesn't go into a yang dominant look that will really help or support someone who's like a flamboyant feminine or dramatic instead. Here is a photo of Winona in the same Tom Waits t-shirt. I included this slide because I wanted to emphasize that a lot of ethereal women, women with a lot of gamine to them as well, don't feel pressure to age or mature your look to be age appropriate. If you still carry the same playful, 
youthful, mischievous, otherworldly essence to you, don't feel the pressure to have to change that to look more mature. Um, so here in the same shirt, she looks great. Uh, I think this longer hair and the longer, more covered up, less figure skimming clothing choices don't flatter her as much. I think even at this age, she could still wear this cropped leather jacket and these jeans with a shorter, more blunt haircut, and she would look just as amazing. All right, let's get into some movie looks that help us get into the nuances of her image. So she is a soft gamine, but when she dresses only to honor her soft gamine and not that shimmering, ethereal, kind of magical quality, the result is a little bit flattening. It's a little bit dull. Yes, these outfits are perfect for her role in Girl Interrupted, but if you were to you know, dress with this approach in real life and you have like a similar essence to her, you might feel boring or you might think you look boring because you're not honoring the other side or your inner essence. So even though these really cute face framing stripes in vivid color, these fun kind of clear shapes, um, the contrasting pattern and the very mod kind of pixie cut, even though they look great on her, they just don't bring out that special quality that she has. And also one very important detail, Winona looks great when she emphasizes her lips, when she puts on a lip color that gives her lips a more rosy glow. It helps to support her yin undercurrent that ethereal sensuality that she has. So when she wears very pale lipstick or um, lipstick that makes it look like she's not wearing anything or something a little bit too dull and too flat, it takes away from that kind of you know shimmering quality that she has. So lips are really important. Um, myself, if I don't wear any lip color and my lips are very pale, I feel like it kind of interrupts the harmony of my face. So um, it might apply to you as well. Here are some fun looks from her movie Heathers, super 80s looks. Here her hair is a little bit longer, but I think it's so um, flattering on her. She strikes the balance between volume and being too diffuse. So if you're a soft gamine, you want some movement in your hair, but you don't want it to be so teased that it just becomes overwhelming. It's too diffuse. You can't see any definitive shape to it. But you also don't want it to be so sculpted and so calculated and so polished that it starts to look stagnant and it looks overdone. So try to strike a balance and frame the face, frame the eyes, anything that really draws attention to her eyes and her beautiful dainty chin and jawline are all really beautiful. I think she looks better in medium to short hair because it looks lighter, it's more airy. As for her lipstick, she wears a lot of really cute lipstick shades in this movie. And as for her outfits there's some fun perky details color blocking rounded edges contrast all really flattering here are some looks from her movie age of innocence these top two i think are more flattering because they're more playful you can see um, some kind of exaggerated but clear shapes on um, the fun collars the more solid blocks of color um, and her neck and her jaw are really emphasized. We get some volume up top as well with these hats. Whereas this bottom look is a little bit too intricate. It's very diffuse. Uh, the very layered intricate necklace, the roses and the low bun, the kind of overly 
intricate and very diffuse quality of her off-shoulder dress. They read a little too romantic. And they don't have enough yang, enough of that definition. So it's not supporting her gamin type. Here are some looks from her movie, When Love Is Not Enough. There's just a lot of intricacy and symmetry going on here. The pearl necklaces are so precise, the very intricate and symmetrical pattern on the hats, um, and as well as with the collar, the cardigan, and her hair is just completely tucked into the hats, which looks restrained. There's just nothing airy or free about these looks. I wanted to include some photos of her with lighter and longer hair. She also looks beautiful with different hair color. It doesn't always have to be dark. As long as the hairstyle has that beautiful wispy movement to it, and as long as her face is nicely made up in that the brows are left darker, the eyes are emphasized in their darkness, and the lips have that nice glow to them, she still maintains that beautiful ethereal quality. So I think she looks great. And you know, it's fun to change things up sometimes. Here I want to talk about how she looks sensual. So in this top look, she's wearing, you know, this white nighty or night slip kind of of dress. I think she looks like Snow White. Here she's wearing this very low cut overall and it really shows off the glow of her skin. She has this very luminous quality to her skin and anyone of any color can have this glow. Some people just have this quality to them that just makes it look like they're being lit from within and Winona definitely has that quality. Again, any skin color can have this glow. Um, it's not just because she's pale or fair. Um, and here I included this photo because she looks sensual, the nice you know, draped translucent reds. But if you're going to wear translucent colors, you need to be more careful and more intentional about framing because the colors just draw more attention. They really bring out the contrast and the shapes. It's just a lot more obvious um, than, say, wearing uh, a translucent black, which acts a bit more cohesively. So just take note of that. Nice face framing details. I will say I think she could use a more free and airy, playful hairstyle here. They just did a little too much symmetry and constraint with her hairstyle here. Um, and they just like didn't color her lips. Here, I wanted to include this side because when she has a really short pixie cut, fur is super flattering. It almost acts like an extension of her hair. It's like a similar kind of feel and shape. So when she wears it around her shoulders in like small doses, it is cohesive while still creating a lot of you know, separation of this staccato rhythm where there's different clear sections of different contrasting elements. So here she's wearing black. She really loves black. She looks great in black, but let's talk about how to use black in a soft gamine flattering way. So if you want to wear a black head to toe, the best approach is to choose a figure skimming outfit that is skimming enough and structured enough so that you can point out different sections of your body and point out different shapes as opposed to wearing something a bit more loose or just structured in a way that creates one unified head to toe shape. You want the different sections. You want that staccato rhythm. You want those segments to be clearly defined. And again, since she is a soft gamine, softed, soft rounded edges are better than too much sharpness and broadness. Here we have these fun little cutouts um, and this interesting like arrow shape to her neckline. Personally, I think the rounded high neck with the cutouts 
more flattering than this very angular neckline. But you know, she looks beautiful in both. Here we have again the rounded high neckline and we have the two different uh, finishes on the fabric to add a little bit more dimension. Here, um, I think this outfit is just a little bit unified, too unified from head to toe and the shoes are very heavy and the hair is a little bit too you know angular and precise this would look great on a flamboyant if you mean like audrey hepburn a yang undercurrent can support this but when you have a yin undercurrent something a little bit softer and more diffuse like this hair it's a lot better here we have some more black dominant looks again try segmenting your black use different obvious shapes um, this kind of look where you have like a more straight cut not as tight dress with a longer slightly boxier kind of leather jacket and then the longer hair that doesn't really show off the shoulders and the neck it's not as flattering as something like this with a slightly more cropped leather jacket the exposed neck and the nicely cropped more figure skimming trousers so mix up the shades of black use some gray use some white keep your details primarily rounded at the edges but you know use a little bit of angularity and sharpness here and there so that was my video on winona Ryder. i had to stop there else i would have added probably 40 slides and this would have turned into a two hour video um if you are also inspired by primarily kind of airy ethereal beauty and icons some of my other favorite beauty and style inspirations are shannon sashaman love her i desperately wanted her haircut all throughout high school i also love emily browning I just watched Sleeping Beauty yesterday. Very strange movie, but she can carry it. She's so beautiful and she just has this quality to her. It's very luminous. Um, also, Jane Birkin. I find her face and her essence to be so airy and I think she looks like a fairy. So those are some other inspirations. I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice Halloween.